All right, welcome to McBoss Capital Channel. It's Michael here and Sunil talking to us as a friendly guest. And um, we're going to start with uh, Mark Minowini book, um, Trade Like a Stock Market Wizard. We're going to go to page 83, chapter 5, Trading with the Trend. So we left off uh, partway through this chapter last time. So trust but verify. I never place much faith in my fundamental ideas. Uh, about a particular company without confirmation from the market, namely the price of the stock. The way I see it is simple. If a company's management is so great and its products are great, the stock should, come, should at some point reflect those fundamentals. If strong fundamentals are not confirmed by the stock price action, the future not, may not be as bright as it appears, or perhaps investors' perception of the company has not changed or has not materialized yet. You want to get on board when institution money is pouring into a stock and lifting it significantly higher. To do that, you need confirmation that this inflow is starting to happen before you invest. Why is the price so important? Even if you're correct in your fundamental analysis of the company, investor perception is what creates buy orders. And you are going to need big buy orders in your stock to move it up significantly. Keep in mind, if the institution investment community doesn't see where you see, your stock could sit dormant for an extended period. Why sit and wait when you can put your money in another stock that's already on the move higher and attract big institution volume support? To compound your capital rapidly, you must be where the action is. You can't afford to have your money tied up in the stock, waiting for what you think is a great fundamental story to get noticed by the rest of the world. I'm willing to give the first leg up in the stock to someone else in exchange for confirmation that the trend is definitely in stage two with some momentum building. The goal is not to buy at the cheapest price, but to sell your stock for significantly, significantly more than the price you pay in the shortest period. That's how super performance is achieved. So let me pause you for a second. I think like this, this, this section is very, very valuable. And oftentimes we will buy a stock and we think, hey, you know, a great story. Either the stock's not, perf the price not moving the way you want it to, or they're like going down. That's even worse. And you just keep holding on to the the idea that, hey, you know, they have great fundamentals and stuff, right? So this, like, you know, and, and he also talked about how, you know, sit and wait is not, like sitting on the stock and waiting is not a good idea, but rather you want to sit you know, outside, right, and wait, and let someone else, you know, buy into the stock first, you know, you don't want to be the first one to buy into stock, thinking, hey, this is the bottom, and I'm, I'm going to make a lot of money because I found the bottom, but the chances are, you know, most likely you, you will not know which one is the bottom, and so, you know, that's why stage two uptrend is so important, I think, um, yeah, so we'll continue here, a any comments before I move on? Mm -hmm. No, yeah, sounds good. Hit a trend reversal. So, um, I think second sentence here. Stocks very often top out while earnings still look good. Investors who wait for earnings picture to dim before hitting the bid for a stage 3 top or stage 4 decline often end up with huge loss. Or at the very least, give back much, if not all, of what they have made on the upside. So, this is talking about like as if, if the stock already you know went through stage 2 and now it's coming down. We cannot wait for uh, the fundamentals either. So the example they use there is Netflix. It plummeted through its 40 week moving average on enormous volume as institutions ran for the exit. So again, volume is a very key indicator um, on both up and down. So we need to pay attention to that. Uh, next section, financial stocks warn of impending trouble. The news media would have you believe that the trouble in financials in 2008 came out of nowhere. The truth, however, is that the stock prices of financial companies were falling into the stage 4 decline for many months, warning of trouble ahead. So in the chart, you can see there's uh, the arrow pointing where, where for a while, it's already showing signs of uh, deterioration. So that mm -hmm. started the stage 4 decline. So it kind of remind me of uh, recently SVB because like or, or other you know uh, regional banks. If you look at most of the charts, they already been declining for a while now. It wasn't like recently it started declining. Um, so yeah, 
kind of remind me of that a little bit. Uh, next section, uh, next page. Trust your eyes, not your ears. The chart of Wicker shows that by the time, so that's an example on the next page, Wicker. Uh, by the time the, the flat earnings were reported, which was a dramatic deceleration from the previous trend of triple growth, the stock had already suffered a vicious decline. This was the result of large institution investors anticipating a loss of earnings momentum going forward and exiting the stock in anticipation. So, yeah, so basically this is like saying, you know, the, some of the institutions already know this is going to happen even before the numbers come out. And you can see at the top it was earning like 78%. And then the mm -hmm. next quarter it was down to 0%. And then the next quarter is 8%. And then the next quarter is negative 7%. Basically single digit growth, right? So it's like mm -hmm. it went from triple digit to single digit, right? And then, but the stock price already correct, corrected majorly, um, bef you know, before it even announced. And then the next example, crops. Note how the negative quarter, negative 71%, was reported long after the stock top, and not until the price was already down 73% from its high. This demonstrates clearly why you cannot wait for a fundamental change when the price action of the stock turned volatile or hostile in the stage 3 or even stage, stage 4. To be successful, you must respect the trend and the wisdom of the market. Crocs weekly chart shows the mass exit taking place as big institutions are wide positions as the stock quickly transitioned from stage 2 to stage 4. So now we can see on the next page there, Green Mountain at the bottom also very similar. Like, you know, it's like three quarters. That one's like one, two, three. Yeah, three three quarters. It went from one hundred thirty three percent to thirty three percent, and then the next quarter it went down to six percent. So, but the stock already been dropping. So that's the problem with you know, especially like growth stocks that went from triple digits to like single digits. So th those things we have to be aware of. Um, next section: broker house opinions. Should you buy a stock on the basis of broker house recommendation if the stock in the stage four downtrend? Definitely not. So that's all that's all that one's talking about like sometimes you know we hear mm -hmm. we hear some analysts upgrade or you know in this case they use this example C chipotle um in 2012 city group upgrade to buy and then it, it start to drop after so you know yeah so it, it you know it depends on the trend right at, at the end of the day uh next page a material change in behavior is a major warning so part way in the paragraph if your stock experienced its largest day of weekly price decline since the beginning of stage 2 events, this is a sell signal. In most cases, even if it comes on the heels of a seemingly great earnings report. Don't listen to the company on the media or the media. Listen to the stock. I've seen companies' earnings report, I mean, report earnings that were only a few cents better than expected on the inline revenues and skyrocket. I've also seen companies report earnings and sell much better than expected, but the stock sold off hard and could not recover. So example here using Crocs in 2007, report quarterly earnings per share of 66 cents versus 63 cents. Although this report was 144% ahead of previous year and even beat three estimates, the stock's action was less than enthusiastic falling 36% in just one day on overwhelming volume after the earnings release. So that's a good example right there. Um, notwithstanding a one-day 5% debt cap bounce, um, the share price dropped another 29% over the next six trading days. Um, on November 2008, it traded as a penny stock at 79 cents per share, down 99% from a high of 75 just one year earlier. So that's a crazy drop. Many times before a fundamental problem is evident, there will be a hint in the form of a material change in price behavior. That change should always be respected even if you don't see any reason for the sudden change in sentiment. Earnings may still look good. The story may still be intact. However, in most cases, you will be far better off getting out, shooting first and ask questions later than waiting to learn the reason why. This is uh, mm -hmm. something that I'm trying to, you know, um, absorb this this line consciously because a lot of time, 
we keep thinking, you know, oh, great earnings, great earnings, great earnings, right? Like, why would it go down? Why would it go down? Like, you, you don't think about, like, hey, maybe there's something that is coming you don't know about, right? So, um, this is why, like, you know, um, it's always good to have some risk management rule. Because when a stock falls, you, you gotta ask yourself, like, why are people selling this stock? You know, especially if there's huge volume. Um, and then uh, when the stock has been in a strong stage two, suddenly goes into stage three, topping pattern, or transition quickly into stage four, don't sit there and assume that everything is fine. There's a reason for the a worse, a worse price move. You just don't know it yet. Whatever you do, don't think that a big break in the stock is now a buying opportunity. Many investors get caught in this trap. A stock they own suddenly declines sharply, believing that the marketplace must be wrong, and that the stock is still a good performer, they decide it's time to buy more. They don't realize that the stock price is down because the big players know something is wrong and are getting out. When you see that happen in the price action, regardless of the fundamentals, it's time to exit. So, uh, they show an example below Illumina. Stocks mm -hmm. breaks out on good earnings report, uh, plus 46%. The stock still drop. And then later on, it shows on the chart, the, the next quarter, the stock keep dropping. And then the next quarter, it, the earnings was down negative 27%. So, again, s some institutions already know that's happening. So before you, you know, before the, the even public. Um, um, yeah, and then the next chart, again, it just shows the weekly chart. It shows how big the volume is when it drops. So, again, institutions are getting out. Okay, last chapter, last paragraph. Let the wind fill your sails. As we discussed in this chapter, to achieve super performance, you need the powerful force of institution buyers on your side to propel your stock's price sharply higher. A propelled stage 2 uptrend provides evidence that institutions are indeed stepping up to the plate, and just as a stage 4 decline clearly demonstrates the opposite. Having the long-term trend on your side is like sailing with the wind on your back. If there is no wind, you're dead in the water, which is stage 1. If the wind is against you, you are, have little chance of moving forward, which is stage 4. The probable wind in your sails is the long-term <coughs> trend of big monies that buy in sync with you. You should look to align yourself with this powerful force. Stick with stocks that are in solid uptrend, and you will be much more likely to own a stock that has the potential to skyrocket and become a super performer. So yeah, um, I just want to read. You know, it, every time I read the book, it inspires me. You know, uh, uh, no matter how hard the the situation is in the market, um, and and you know, sometimes we 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 lose focus on on what is the big picture, and you know, um, again my. I kind of follow his uh, mentality of like, you know, we want to find super performance stocks. And our goal is to, once we find it, our goal is to, you know, enter at the right time. Again, just like he said earlier, you know, you don't have to be the first one. But if it's in a stage two uptrend, you probably want to be part of that. And then you you try to understand, you know, um, whether, you know, you can hold on to, as, you know, to whenever that stage two is, is, is uh, done. Um, it's not easy, especially I think at the beginning of a you know bull market, it's always tough. Um, and we do see lots of volatility. Um, um, you know, yeah. Any comments before we jump into like more uh, stock stuff? Mm -hmm. No, uh, interesting stuff. Yeah, I was uh, I was just wondering how to identify like stage two, but uh, then I found out. Seventy nine, yeah. So, yeah, mm -hmm. and we already talked about it. Yeah, right. Um, so this week, I think uh, a lot of people will pay attention to, um, the semiconductors, and mm -hmm. they have been pulling back. You can see right here. I draw an upper channel line. Um, right now it's on the downtrend. Um, you know, we don't know when this will end. But it is kind of drifting down slowly. We had one, uh, like we had one here before too. That was in uh, February, uh, when this first started. The market started going down on the Nasdaq, um, and then same thing. The semiconductors also fell. But you know, one thing I do notice is like it's not falling hard, right? Even here, it was falling much harder, 
like right here you can see there's a few days that's pretty hard um here we we had a couple like one day i think that was the wednesday i remember that fell hard and then it kind of stabilized but you know it is making new lows so that's that is the problem right now um and the 50 day has started to come up and now starting to flatten so you know that's that's something to be aware of but also the 200 day is starting to curve up so again is it time for it to digest it makes sense for it to digest a little bit here um so you know but some stocks are starting to fall apart so um you know um so that's that's why you know we have to like manage our risk here because we don't know what's going to happen next is it just going to all of a sudden you know we get some bad news uh and and then it's just going to fall apart right that that could happen in no time so you don't want to be get get caught in that um uh and then usually if it does that happens you know usually oh you know it'll sell off for a few days because of some bad news and then everything you know will kind of hit new lows or recent lows and then you know uh panic will set in and people will sell and then it'll start to bounce back again right like you know it's it's the same thing that happens over and over so that's why it's like very prudent to uh at least for me week to week like i always try to understand like um you know can i trim some off if i can because if especially if you're in a profit mode because right now we we're not in that full like you know everyone say the same thing we're not in the full bull market uh zone yet uh, in fact, they said this is the slowest. If this is a true bull market, this is the slowest bull market ever since, like in a long time. Um, because you know, if we count the October low, it's been like almost six months, and and this is the slowest six months of a bull market. They said. <laughs> so, if this is again, we don't know for sure if this is a bull market. You know, definitely there's a lot of uh, bears out there challenging this this thinking. Um, you know, so you know, um. But you know, for me, I I I just find it really hard to believe that it'll go back down, especially given like we have gone through quite a bit of things since the beginning, since since October. You know, we have gone through um, December. We had this, you know, um, w this pessimism where everyone just feel like you know, everything's gonna shut down in the new year, like nothing's gonna go well, and then all of a sudden, new year we have this big boom in some of the tech stocks. Um, and then net, net, uh, sorry, yeah, lots of stuff. Netflix, Meta, like everything kind of not recover fully, but at least they recover some. Um, and then comes February, we're starting to have this pessimism again, like, oh, you know, it's earnings going to be good. It's going to be bad. The Fed's going to raise, raise longer, blah, blah, blah. Right. And now we in May. So it's like, we, mm -hmm. we're going into May and, 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 you know, so, you know, I'm going to jump to this right now because I think, like, you know, it's just the flow of the conversation. Let me, let me just jump to it right now. Uh, we, sorry. Go to what that watch here. 89% is expecting a quarter point rate hike. Like, I don't remember the last time, like, you know, we see such a, a, a high, uh, you know, expectation of, you know, a specific value. You know, uh, so it's like the market already know that, you know, um, how do you say? Yeah, the Fed is going to raise one more time. And and to me, this is a good thing, right? Because um, so next one is going to stay the same. So 68%. So this value has also gone up since the last time I look at it. So like if like this is two weeks from now, less than two weeks from now. So if, if this... Mm -hmm. If this happens and, and the Fed comes out and they say they're going to pause, which is, that's what's happened, you know, going to happen in June and they say they're going to pause. And there's no, like, between now and then, there's no, like, CPI numbers going nuts or um, consumer, you know, wage, inf or, or, I mean, the wage inflation going crazy again or, you know, stuff like that, right? Um, or, you, like, even the producer price index, which was really good last time. But let, let, let's just say if that goes or go wonky again, then yeah, then we're gonna have problems. But I, I, I really don't believe that will happen. Um, just because like year over year compression is much different now, because it's been over a year, you know. So it's much harder to go up than, than to go down. Um, so so that's why I'm 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 leaning definitely more bullish. But the the other bear uh, sentiment is that they they keep saying you know things are very expensive, right? For example, I was listening to this uh, Alan saying McDonald's, right? 
is uh trading you know uh yeah tw like 29 times well he was saying 30 times depending how you calculate but that's really high you know traditionally for a stock like this and so you know they're saying basically lots of stocks right now are highly priced um you know which is not a good thing okay um so that's something yeah to be aware of like I, you know and that's why some of those analysts are calling calling for anywhere from a 10 to 20 percent correction uh coming in may they say um is it gonna happen yeah there's a high possibility especially if you if you reflect on stocks like this so that's the scary part right um you know but i think for me anyway i feel like the market is kind of like um not in sync right like we've been talking about the last month like last many weeks now how you know um things are very out of sync right now some you know basically they're not moving together and so it's possible that you know these stocks have been running right uh in the last month but yet we have tax not moving which is going the opposite and so maybe this will take a break and then the tax will go up you know what i'm saying so that's kind of what I'm leaning more towards in terms of, um, you know, how the market is going to act, you know, in the next few months. Um, yeah, because it's definitely hard. If you look at this stock, it's definitely hard to say, hey, is this going to keep shooting higher? You know, I highly doubt it because historically, 30 is very high PE ratio for this stock. So I see what mm -hmm. some analysts are saying, right? And and I'm just using this example because this one is very obvious. Um, you know. Unless, you know, unless they're really showing some big growth that no one is aware of, then then that could be the reason. But other than that, it's, it's unlikely, right? So some stocks are definitely priced quite high. Um, and, 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 you know, I'm not, I'm not even talking about, like, in this case, like a big growth stock or anything like that. Anyhow, so that's, that's some of the sentiments about, you know, where the market is right now. Um, Again, it's very mixed picture. It feels like every day, um, things are getting very uh, confused, and you know, and you you still have lots of bears out there, and there's still some bulls, but more lately, more bulls have been kind of pushing back down their estimate for this year. So, so they even some of the bulls like are realizing that things are not as good, and um, I think the earnings season so far um, shows you know. A lot of companies are having trouble going forward. Not so much this current quarter that they just reported, but going forward, like they they think that it's going to be more more um you know problematic to to maintain those those uh, earnings growth and stuff like that. So that's why we saw a lot you know lots of stocks this week even um like kind of starting to fall apart, which is not good. Um, yeah. Any comments? No, I'm just uh, basically watching earnings. Next week is also a very important one, but uh, this week was not great. Uh, yeah. Tesla. Yeah. So Nasdaq here, you can see on the weekly chart, it's very tight. Like again, I I really like this pattern. Um, like you know, if I just look at the index, um, you can see it's holding twelve thousand really strong three weeks in a row. And it's a very tight week. Like every week seems to be tighter. Uh, mm -hmm. after this big run on uh, this one week run on like four weeks ago. So to me, this is like really bullish sign. Um, so I like I say I, I'm like you know, some stocks are falling apart, but but you know, um, but I think like as soon as this this you know thing is over and like I said, we, we get a better clear picture of what happening to the to the growth tech stocks. Um which we don't really know yet. So this, this week we will have many big tech stocks, right? Apple, Amazon. Um, I don't know if Apple is important. So Amazon, Google, Microsoft, right? So uh, let me check. When is Apple reporting? Is it this week too? Okay, no, it's the week after. So they're, they're reporting a week later. But this week we have three giants reporting. So, um, so But that's a pretty good indicator of what's going to happen with the tech, tech world. Um, so yeah, that, I think that will move the market for sure. Um, you know, we'll have to see. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's, that's NASDAQ. And then, and then we look at S&P. 
Look, S and P is actually like looking even better. Like this chart, because you can see here, you know, Nasdaq was like has one week up and then it kind of went sideways, right? Didn't make a new high. Look at this one. So it make a new high here four weeks ago, and then two weeks ago, uh, it make another high, right? And then even this week mm -hmm. is so tight. So S and P, which includes a lot of financials, this is what's happening. A lot of financials are starting to come back up. Not all of them, but some are. So that's a good sign, right? Um, so I think the financials are, I think it's definitely the strongest. Like if I show you, um, let me see here, go to my market trend, uh, ignore this, this symbols here. Cause I'm just tracking. I just have to look at them. I haven't looked at them, but, um, you can see here financials here. This whole week is kind of strong net accumulation. It's not a big number, but it's net accumulation, you, you know, uh, even on Thursday and Friday, it's still net accumulation, like throughout the whole week and then we have uh, health as well so health and financial are the two leaders right now in in terms of sectors this week uh but in terms of market overall we can see the market start to fall apart on thursday and friday um so lots there's lots of distribution happening um this last two days so again like you know we're seeing mixed pictures but overall this week health and financial are leading and we see tech has taken the backseat now. Like it's it's actually net distribution now happening, right? So, um, so that's what's happening. Any questions? <laughs> no. Nope. Yeah. Sounds interesting. Yeah. yeah. So so like you know um. Yeah, I don't have many financial stocks. I do have some health stocks. Um. So, you know. So that's the, the, the that's where things are heading right now, at least for now. I don't know if things are going to change right away. Um, so we are still up on up uh, about fifty and two hundred, so it can come close to fifty. Right? Yeah, there's still like you know if we look back at S and P, it's still quite a high above, right? So mm -hmm. that's really really good news, you know, like the, yeah. um. You know, they, they basically like, this is like bull trend now, right? Like, this is why, like, even though it's, it's not like strong, but it's, it's starting mm -hmm. to turn, right? Like, that's the key. You know, we have this long downtrend here and it's yeah. finally turning. So it's, it's normal for it to digest. Again, I really think the yes. market won't move big until like it's been moving in a positive way, but it hasn't moved big, like meaning like everything moving, mm -hmm. right? Like, like, like the, the, the sell is on your, on your side, like, you know, the wind is on your side and you're selling like ahead, like moving nicely, right? It hasn't been like that. You know, a lot of stocks continue to break out and fall back and they break out and they fall back. They break out and they fall back. Like so many stocks just keep doing that. Uh, again, this is not the environment to go all in on a breakout. It's just tough environment to do that. Um, you know, and you will have to stomach through that pullback every single time after it breaks out. Like there's always that one or two stock that would not do that, but most of the stocks are doing that. So that's why it's still prudent to buy on pullbacks rather than buy on breakouts right now. Um, you know, mm -hmm. and, and even take profit, you know, a little bit of profit um, every week if you can, if it's making a new high, you know, because it's just not yeah. the type of environment where it just keeps going up and up and up, right? But like I said, once we have that full bull, full bull market confidence where everyone knows, hey, you know, right now, that's why the bears and bulls are fighting, right? They, they're all mixed, right? They're all confused, you know, no one knows who's right or wrong. You, like I said, even recently, the, the bull analysts are starting to trim down their, their, their estimate for this year, for the year end, end of the year, right? So it's, it's starting to be more and more bearish again, a little bit, not too much, but, um, but that's the thing, right? No one really knows, um, you know, Pretty much right now, like I think uh, they were saying how they haven't seen. I don't know which index. Like, maybe Dow. Let me go look at Dow for a second. Uh, it could be Dow. I can't remember. They're saying like it's been like uh the tightest range of of uh, trading for index since like 2021, right? Like they, like it's like which is because usually it move one percent at least for like every one or two days. <laughs> But this is like really, really tight, you know, um, and that's a good news, right? To me, that's good news. Uh, so the bulls and bears, whoever, like, you know, you're too bullish, you buy call options, you're going to lose money. If you're too bearish, you buy put options, you're going to lose money, right? So it's kind of like, side, like, in a way, it's like going sideways, really. 
right? Um, so that's that's mm-hmm. kind of what's happening right now, and yeah. So like, I just want to point out Dow. Look at Dow, right? It's been the strongest index. It's four weeks up, making new high, and then this week, look at where it closed. It's like near the top, right? Like it closed compared to last week's range. It's like near the top. So this is really really um good technical action. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the index in general. Like I said, the index are still looking like, in my opinion, very, very good. In fact, I feel like it's almost uh, ready to break out. Right? Like you can see if I like, you know, on the weekly chart, if I draw like a trend line right here, you can see right, it's near the oops, you can see it's near the top right here, right? So if it breaks out above this trend line, I think. I think that's it, and I, I don't know if that will happen this week. I think it could happen on the Fed week, right, when they announce what they're gonna do next. And maybe, uh, you know, for me, I think it's a good news if, if the market can. Uh, uh, again, you know, so this is the trend line right now. I think it's gonna sit there until the Fed make that decision. I don't think it will make any big move until then. Um, you know. And then here's another one, like really tight, see? But it's near the top, the, the what I'm trying to get at is, it's near, every week is closing at the top of the trend line. Even though it hasn't gone up above it, but it's it's like waiting for that, you know, it's like this spring, uh, Jim Roper always used this analogy. It's like, you know, a stock's near, near highs, but they don't want to come down, but it always couldn't break out yet. It's like a spring being coiled up, and then eventually once it breaks out, it's going to be strong. So let's look at Russell for example. Um, so this is still the weakest index, but it has slowly climbed up. This week is again, it still hasn't broke out yet. So follow the same phenomenon, except this chart is still on, you know, kind of on a downtrend mode. So you can see this, this right here. This is like the the pinnacle point right here, right? This level, eighteen hundred. So that's that's again same thing. Um, but yeah, but Russell has his own fight. It's slightly tougher, right? Um, but yeah, like I said, financial did well this week. Um, you know, like even though the index doesn't show it here on Russell, but a lot of, um, maybe the bigger caps did better. That's why S&P has moved up, um, has done probably the best this week, um, compared to others. So that's where we're at. Um, we can look at the, like, I want to look at this one. Um, this is the, all the sectors and uh ignore smh the, um yeah no that one um ignore that one because that that's not a sector that's more of an industry group uh, but right now um you can see okay sorry uh so this is from beginning of the year it's been roughly close to four months we can see energy clearly at the bottom um so i think that story has sell like you can look at the chart quickly here um, if recession is coming, then energy is probably unlikely to go up, right? Just because people mm-hmm. are going to, you know, do less, much less travel, all this stuff. Yeah. And, and, but, you know, I, ha- I haven't looked at travel stocks lately, but I, I think they're still doing pretty well. But I, I, I don't know. Usually this has to do with like driving cars and stuff, not so much like flying. Um, so you can see like it, it's still trading pretty tight. So I wouldn't say this thing is over. But seasonality usually like around May is when it tops, so we kind of I don't know near the end of this like you know so I don't know yeah unless something drastic happened I don't know I don't think it'll go anywhere because this was the chance to break out it didn't um it just it just couldn't right you see it it broke out right here and then it fell back down right away so again this was a trap um um yeah but anyhow that's energy at the bottom you see utility real estate. Um, if we move back up here, we see XLY discretionary, which is, uh, you know, for still third strongest right here, 14%. We see XLK technology still up 18%. Communications, which is the strongest, up 20%. So if we move this scale just to like where this peak here is SMH, because SMH has been going down right here, roughly around. April so let me let's just start from April 1 
and just see what happened in the oops to uh yeah what happened since that time oh this is really hard to read um okay okay but we can see it slightly live here so we see xlv at the top three percent we also see xlf at the top three percent so those two like i say health and financial has been leading the, so far in april right um yeah but let's look at the numbers here because that graph is really hard to read and then we have our utilities two percent consumer staples two percent energy two percent um we have technology down two percent this month like communication down slightly so like overall is you know not like big numbers it's you know pretty flat but yeah so health and 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 um and financials has picked up this month so so that's that's something kind of like i say kind of coincide with what we're seeing here too in the last week uh, although it wasn't too obvious right the first two weeks it wasn't obvious yet um but this it could be that the performance mainly came from this last week i don't know um so that's what's happening there um if we jump to let me see let me look at all the indicators here what else do we have so atlanta fed uh estimate for q1 now is that came back up it was going down and it came back up um it looks pretty good 2.5 percent so no no um again no one expect this to be negative so it's more like what happened from april to june that's what most people care and, and like the fed said that, you know most people will predict is going to be negative so it'll be interesting to i don't know when's the first um uh you know yeah i don't know the usually it's a few weeks four weeks to late so we won't see the first estimate for for april probably for another week or so or, so, uh, or, or two weeks because that'll be the good indicator of what's happening right but that's why people are paying a lot of attention to the earnings right now and no one's meddling like except health and financial because you know financial have been beaten up and health has been like you know um building a long base right and now they're starting to move back on the right side of the base so those two sectors you know are you know in in terms of values where people are going towards um whereas things like you know uh retail and and, and tech is taking a back seat right now because people are uncertain about where earnings are going so they they want to see the numbers right they're waiting to see the numbers so the next two weeks uh, which is majority of the earnings news report will come out on guidance that's where it could make the difference right so and then on top of that we have you know like i said the fed and and and, and another and another um uh unemployment report after that so it's like so so many things happening in the two, next two weeks so it could really change the dynamics of where things are going to go so you know right now it's just kind of sit and hold type of mentality uh and manage your risk that's that's pretty much it uh fear and greed index it's pretty high it's like greed level right now 65 um again i i you know for me you know definitely this is probably why some of the growth stocks have pulled back um you know but overall like you know i feel like you know i don't want to look at this as much right now because um it's more important than what the fundamentals are uh, than the psychology right now i think mm -hmm. i think the next two weeks the fundamentals are going to drive the future um you know because we can be all agreed right it, c it can go up even further and, and make a new high and be all agreed but you know so i don't want to say hey is this the top or not the top because i think that it's going to be determined by the fundamentals more than more than the psychology right now um so that's that um yeah so i think the only thing that is important this week from an economic standpoint is uh um this p uh, personal consumption report on friday which also talks about the wage inflation as well i believe so that that will be important this friday because it's, it's the week before uh fed announcement the week after so that's why um that will that will make a uh, you know if this is low then it will give them confidence to pause so we'll see right that's that's important um yeah so all right so that's pretty much it in terms of macro sentiment 
the index, major index, sectors. Um, from a stock perspective, um, you know, we can look at some like like a net um so this couple of stocks fall apart this week a net is one of them you can see my arrow here i i got stop out there um pretty much near near this level somewhere around there i got stop out um and then on friday we saw some buy in at the, after near come near the 50 day so that's that's a good sign because that's exactly where you want to see support uh institutions often support at the 10 10 week moving average or the so-called 50 day average. so that's what we're seeing right now exactly what we're seeing is good this is good now um you know uh we want to continue to see that though so next week like we don't want it to keep going down so that's the key right uh, and then you look at allegram so this one the week before i told you i also got stop up a, a week earlier on this one and and look at where it is now right you know if if it definitely fell apart even further so that's why you know it's okay if you get trapped and but you can see this way it just you know like i remember friday i was like oh it got so like you because even though it, it it only went down by 10 percent, 10 cents less i got i got i got um you know call, call my you know i, I saw it's so automatically because of my stop but look at this week, right? It went down even further. So this is this is probably by far the worst looking right now, because it's like on the downtrends, right? And this is this looks scary. Uh, this, this really, the, I don't know where the next support line is. Maybe forty, if not forty, then here. So, um, yeah. So like this is a good stock, you know, strong fundamentals. But that's the thing, right? That you know, it has gone up a lot, and it's now starting to build probably the next phase um you know so here's stage one and and then it move on to be, you know this is really now consider stage two it's going to build this stage two base so you know yeah so that's why you know like if for me i don't like holding even through corrections like even if it's a 20 30 percent correction i don't like holding through it so i usually will, will sell before that uh, and then I'll buy it back, you know. Like so, right now we have a clear trend line, like this. So let me let me clear this. So that's how I approach this, right? Like I, this is still fundamentally a strong stock, but every stock will. The when they write this, you know, when I say stage two, there's two different things, right? Stage two, Mark Minnelli is like the stage two long uptrend. Here, uh, on the base is is also called stage two, right? Um, but the trend is that we're talking about this, you know, long-term trend here for, for what Mark Mini Mini is talking about. is this long-term trend, right? So, but as it goes up this stage two, which could last a year or more, it could, it will build this basis, right? This, you know, different, like, short-term basis, right? Uh, you know, five to six weeks or something like that. So, so now we have this big uptrend. Now it's going to build this base, right? Which is going to take five to six weeks or more. And it's gonna come out of that. And one way to buy at a short, uh, 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 a good price is follow this trend line, right? A good way to buy. So once it passes that trend line, then you know you're gonna get it at a pretty good price. You know, so it could be here. When it comes back, it goes up, right? Or it can go down further, and then break out here, and then you know, so. So you have the ability to buy at lower price. So right now you can see if I another trend line here is that uh, right there. See this black line, right? Um, so I think around this level, which is where it is exactly right now, uh, it's trying to hold on to this level. If it fell, it's probably going to keep going. So, so that's the scary part. That's Allegram. Um, but Anet looks a lot better. It's holding 50 day, but we never know, right? Like next week, if some bad news come up from the big techs. So apparently, um, I don't know, was it here? I read it. I haven't read through this whole week's uh, paper yet, but um, yeah, but Anet, it's, um, their, their customers include like Meta, um, 
uh, Microsoft, even another big giant. I don't remember if it's Google or Apple. So like Anet has those customers. So mm -hmm. so so if those three again I can't remember the third company. If those three report and they don't they say that they're gonna cut down on you know spending or capital spending and stuff like that, then you know because these are the networking guys, right? So they're gonna get, get a hit. You know, so that's something to be aware of. But if they come out and they say, hey, we don't see any slowdown in that, we're still going to keep spending on networking and stuff, it could, you know. And which I, I feel like is more likely, but who knows? I don't know. I don't really know, right? <laughs> so, but I feel like it's more likely that they'll expand than cut down, especially, um, I don't know. Um, so, so that will impact this stock, is all I'm saying. So, mm -hmm. it's, 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 but once, if, if, if that is clear, if, if, if this week like, the, the big cap tax don't say anything bad, about capital spending and stuff, um, I think this stock will start to go back up. This is by far the most liquid uh, growth stock besides Nvidia. Um, mm -hmm. That is doing really well, right? So again, these are all the numbers here. Like, you know, not every single number is support, right? And then you can see where all the volume is, like, like so much volume buying in the last two months you know this institution is by here they're not gonna let go unless something really drastic happened um so look at this volume selling volume so low right so that's a, all those are good signs so everything is uh, technically perfect so that's a net uh and and then lscc uh which is not a cheap stock it's here so this one is trading really tight. It take you know it, it it's going sideways. Um, you know it's it's not it's looking pretty good. This guy. Uh, this one is you know day to, daily range is much higher, but but you know not as bad as SMCI. We'll go to SMCI after this. But it's it's holding pretty tight. Um, you know, which is very good. Like, you know, I don't see many people talk about it. Like. I, I don't know. I, I don't even know the full fundamental story about it. But the numbers are good. Everything looks good. Um, it's it's been you know it's been going up you know nicely steady. I like stocks like this. It's much easier to hold. I think I have not trade in and out this stock at one once since I bought it. So it's just so easy to hold, right? Steady. Um, everything looks good here. Like volume. Look at the high scraper, skyscraper volume. Um, look at the selling is it dry up right it's, it's, it's starting to look good so this is good this is good like, like I said this this few weeks of pause like the whole month of April um, it's, 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 it's good to see which one will survive this this fall um, okay so let's go to SMCI so this stock it's like LSCC except it's more volatile right you can see it's like go up down up down up and now down right so that's the pattern, uh, but if you look at a weekly chart, it looks a lot better. Um, so right here, you can see, right, broke out, and now it's like trading in a tight range, in this range basically, which is about twenty dollar difference, so like hot for hundred to hundred twenty. So everyone knows it now, like even on IBM is like, oh, this stock just moved from 120 to 100 and back to 120 to back to 100. <laughs> it's like three, four, five times now. Um, yeah. That's what it's doing. Um, again, good thing is we, we're still seeing high volumes, you know, on the buy side, less volume on the sell side. Um, so, you know, nothing has changed. You know, this is, you know, by far the, you know, for me, anyway, I feel like it's by far one of the best performing stocks since this since, since October. Um, if I go to the boss capital here for a second, um, and I go to SMCI. Okay, so it's twenty one on the list here. Um, so, so it's not it's pretty pretty high still, right? So, despite what's it doing right now. Let me open this Yeah. So this, you see this light arrow blue 
it's uh telling you that this is reverse upside and so you know if it bounces on monday again you could again you buy on pullback right you, you can buy on that pullback um mm-hmm. you know if, if if you want to but that's the point um so if i go to the file here we'll look at the file at the end but um i just want to highlight it right now so smci right here 21 since uh october low still up 94 percent uh you know so it's still tr- near the top you see allegro here um allegro um also same but like i said it has started to, you know i guess they're both on a downtrend right now um okay so let's keep going so we have uh this one most oh rumbus yeah rumbus rumbus Look at Rambus. I I'm starting to like Rambus a lot. Like I'm starting to like it. Look at look at this high scrapers. Same thing. Volume's dwindling down. But the one thing I like about it is this up one week up. Again, I like when it goes really powerful run up and then go sideways like many weeks, right? And it didn't even come down halfway, not even halfway of that range. Um like I like I like to see like so there's two type of pattern right uh, for uptrend you can see stocks that go um like one one week up another week up another week up and then it could fall like like really hard one week like this is you know like may, maybe not fall all the way but like even fall to here um like I I I don't like to see that but it happens a lot. Or the the ones that are more rare is this way on the uptrend, which is they go up really strong, and then they just go down really slow, right? So th- th- those are the two ways that it can go up. So so it can go up like that. Oops, like this, and then it goes down like this, and then it goes again. Like that's one way, but like I said, I like this way more because this shows power. This shows that people are not willing to sell. Like it's more mm-hmm. obvious. And we go to daily. All right, you see we have this two days run, and then look at how many days it's just going sideways at the top range. So this is power. This is what I like on the price side. Really strong, powerful action. Um, this is a turnaround story. Um, so it's so it's less obvious. Like if you if you only like for because a lot of people use like like tools to query or or, or find stocks. But if they're only using the last quarter number, they're not gonna find this, right? But if you use estimate, I believe it's uh, let's see, the estimate is it's like eighty four percent, so it's pretty good. So it's a turnaround story. So anyhow, um, so yeah, so that's Rambus. Any other chip stock you you wanna look at? Maybe Nvidia. That's one I can think of. So again, same thing here. You see, really strong move, and then sideways, like. This is power. Look at this volume selling. No one's selling. If you like, I I know it doesn't have the numbers still, but uh, but we'll see, right? Um, like Nvidia, I haven't checked it in a while now. Let's see if it update Nvidia. I just want to make sure it hasn't changed. Yeah, I see. It's still forecast minus fifty percent. It's more. They're most likely will beat this number. Like, like it might not be up a lot. If it's up a lot, like if it turns positive, it'll be like crazy. Like you know. But but I think yeah the forecast is still pretty weak, uh. But like I say, pretty tight range. Mm-hmm. Like this is the run right here. Like about six seven how many days? Eight day nine day run or maybe ten days actually ten day run, and then it kind of stuck at this range now, right? Just consolidating. Okay. Uh, we'll jump to Tesla since we're talking about media. Those two kind of the most talk. <laughs> These two are probably the most talk stock in the market. Yeah, so we, they report, you know, again, the sa- what do you call it? the sacrificing margin for volume, and even the volume didn't didn't make them do that well, right? Like even though they sold more cars, but the the revenue and stuff and earnings wasn't. It wasn't drastically improved, right? Because the margin is going lower. So, so th- this is a bad. This is a big problem right now for Tesla. It's it's just like you know, uh, 
the demand, the problem is they're producing more, way more than the demand right now. And so, you know, I had a talk yesterday with another friend, he, you know, he's definitely into Tesla and, you know, he, he, you know, I asked him that question. I say, you know, do you feel like the demand is peaking? And when I say peaking, not in terms of like the number itself, but the growth. And he doesn't think so, right? He thinks that uh, growth are still there. But for me, I've been, you know, I have been feeling the opposite, right? I feel like most people who want to buy a Tesla already bought one. But again, he argues that, hey, maybe Tesla, as it get lower in price, more people will buy it. And maybe that's true. But I don't know, like, it's still, it's still, you know, hard to say, right? Like, but, the, but they're finding a bad trend, trend right now, which is they're sacrificing uh, margins for more volume. Um, and, and that's not a good fight, you know, over time, you know, if you keep decreasing your price, um, because the demand is not there, that's the fundamental issue is the demand is not there. Right. Um, and you know, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't feel good about this stock. So I'm saying, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I agree. But uh, see, when you, when you hear people say, oh, they have the like most percentage of margin compared to other uh, or, uh, manufacturers like auto, auto manufacturers so. but it's 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 basically overall market like people are buying less cars is that what's going on i don't know that's the that's the good question right like uh, how like i don't know how to differentiate whether and that's what they said on their earnings call is that hey the demand is slowing because of the economy and slowing down I don't, I'm not sure, right? I don't know. Like, like, it, it could be true. I don't, but how do you actually differentiate? Versus, like, are people, you know, like, I don't know. Like, for me, I would think that if prices drop 20%, like, people would be rushing out to buy it right now. But that's not the case, you know? So that's why I don't feel as optimistic as some people, right? It should, it should be obvious, but it's not obvious. That's the problem. <laughs> you should seeing like people line up by Tesla and like wanting to buy a car. You know, we didn't get any stories like that, right? <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. like, you know, I think like I say, I, I always believe that's why I like for me for the longest time, I always believe that that's why I, I never like was, um, too keen on Tesla before. Not because, you know, well, Partly because I it's not my 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 choice my my preference, but the other reason is because like I never felt like people in general like oh I need an EV I need an EV no I never hear people say that right it's more some people yes they're like oh I need I'm gonna get an EV next right but I, I don't know I I still find a lot of people who are like like you know like one of my friends just bought a hybrid instead <laughs> so he didn't buy a full EV he just bought a hybrid and he told me like oh. Uh, I've been driving this car for a month. I don't remember which car. I think it's a Lexus. Um, it's been driving for a month. It's only one time I feel the gas. So it's almost equivalent to oh. an EV. Yeah. It's almost equivalent to an EV. But it's long distance still, right? So And you're not paying like a lot of money for it, right? So, I don't know. Like, it's it's not full EV. That's That's one thing, right? But, you know, it's still pretty... Like for city driving, he said it's okay, you know, no problem, you know. Yeah, and then, and then for, if you go long distance, of course, it will use the gas and stuff. But, but that's the thing, right? Like, I don't know. I think it, it does take time for people to switch to EV. And I think most of the people who want an EV already bought one. And so, I don't know. It's going to take more time to convert other people, right? To move to EV, like right now anyway. Like eventually everyone will move, but it just takes time is what I'm saying. People want yes. people wants to feel comfortable. Like, oh, what happens if, you know, your car, you know, one of my friends Tesla, like, you know, something happened. I can't remember exactly. Um, like one of the parts, like, you know, failed to operate, and then they couldn't have the car for I don't know how long, like a week or two. I don't know because they have to fix it, and it's not like convenient, right? So, like, you know, it's not it's not as easy. Like, hey, I'm just gonna go to a mechanic get it fixed today. Done. No, you have to schedule it. You have to. You know, they give you a timeline. I don't know. I don't know all the details. I'm just, this is just what I'm hearing, right? So, and then you have the supercharging station issue, right? You know, it's not everywhere yet. Infrastructure It's going to take a long time in Canada to build out the infrastructure. Uh, if it even ever get built, like, you know, um, like right now they have, you know, here and there, one or two, you know, in different areas, right? 
but it's not like everywhere. It's not like in the U.S. You have it almost on on, on places. So I don't know. It's just hard for people to buy in. So I'm saying, right? Again, that's my own opinion. But obviously, a lot of people disagree with what I think. Um. So, but I feel like this is um again this two hundred day, and this is what I've been talking about. This two hundred day, this thing is re- this is the, you know. This is the bad thing. Is this two hundred day? It's sliding down. It couldn't pass it twice now, and now it's falling apart. It make a new low right on Friday, on Thursday and Friday. So it hasn't, and that's the thing. It didn't even bounce back on Friday much. So that's a sign it's gonna continue. Um, will it challenge this one hundred? One hundred is pretty far away. So I don't know. Like more bad news has to happen. For example, they're gonna. I keep hearing a few things, right? One thing is in China, the price war is pretty bad, and Tesla start. Any everyone say Tesla started it. I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, but the Chinese companies are not willing to budge. They're gonna they're gonna go head to head with them. So so they expect even more price war going forward. They said. Um, the other thing is production level. They're so high compared to demand. What they're gonna do, right? This w- decreasing price is only a, a temporary solution. But what if this constantly stay the same for the next year? Like they're gonna have to start to, you know, cut down on their production, which is bad news, right? Uh, that will tank the stock. That will tank the stock if they cut down production, uh, for sure. So I feel like they have a really hard road ahead of them. And 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 Friday, uh, I I I don't even, I didn't even count so many analysts downgrade Tesla. It's not even funny. Every single guy come on CNBC. Yeah, I just downgrade Tesla. I just downgrade Tesla. <laughs> it's like, holy cow! Yeah, it's not good. Again, fundamentals are are looking weak right now. Anyhow, I think, yeah. I'll let, I'll let, if you have anything else you want to add to Tesla, that's all I have. I think the numbers. No, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. No, I was just saying, like basically, Tesla's unique point is uh, technology, like autonomous driving and mm-hmm. that, and. I get it right now what's going on but that's where they can shine but uh, like the stock prices are not reflecting that because right now if you see in the market the trend is AI right yeah and, uh, Tesla have a good AI talent they have like that that's why basically computer on wheels yeah so remember yeah no that's a good point so remember when we just read Mark Winnie Winnie right look at this they actually beat earnings right they actually beat by like less than one percent, but but doesn't but the point is, they didn't miss by much, but the stock still ten almost ten percent that day. Like again, this is this is why you know like what, like what he said right like he just said that earlier. He's like you know even though the you know the numbers may look not look bad, but the stock still sell off. It means that you know institutions are getting out, right? So. Yeah. So this is what's happening. Look at that volume, right? It's so high. Like it's the highest volume since base one. Okay, since here. So basically, since this uptrend, this is the highest volume. That's pretty crazy. You know, look at this, right? Mm-hmm. So this is institutions yeah. getting out. This is not like just some random people getting out. So that's why, like, mm-hmm. like this, this does not look good, right? Like you know, and then like say a Friday. Like even f- just looking at the technical chart, like look at that bounce. It's so weak. You expect it to recover half usually. Like it's up one percent Friday <laughs> after losing nine yeah. percent. Like that's that's a you know because there's always people want to think oh this is let's buy it. It's, it's cheap, right? It's down nine percent, you know. But this is what's happening. It's not no one is coming in. And look at that volume comparison. It's like so low, right? So yeah. This is uh this is not good, you know. But like I say even even the numbers doesn't look that bad. Uh, the forecast is for still forecast still still growing at five percent earnings. But again, the problem is it's now down to negative or single digit, which is not good, right? You know there used to be like mm-hmm. you know double or triple digit, right? So it's like it's like going the other way. And then sales, you can see the sale number going down too. So. It's only getting worse. Is all I'm saying. Like nothing is improving right now, unless like I say, you know, we see things getting better. I I I don't know. Uh, but in China, I heard it's heating up even worse. Like the Chinese companies are not willing to bow down. 
to to compete with like because that's what the, they say that Tesla dropped the price the price first, and then the Chinese companies follow, mm -hmm. and then they drop again, and then they follow, they drop again, they follow. Like they're constantly falling, right? Like so so Tesla mm -hmm. said they might have to drop again. That's what the rumor is right now. I don't know when they'll announce well, it. Like, yeah, and they said that Tesla in China already been half the price now since the top, the peak price already half. So I don't know how they're gonna compete in China. So they're losing that war big time, I think. And they, because in China, there's not just there's also many, right? Not just one or two, right? There's quite yeah, a few maybe. EV companies there. So you know, it's a big market, that's for sure. It's a big pie. But the problem is, you know, when you keep cutting margins like that, it's pretty crazy, man. Um, yeah, that's a long talk about Tesla, <laughs> but it's a good talk. It's it's relevant because you know. It's uh, but technically you can see it's breaking down pretty hard, um, yeah, and the fundamental is not supporting either. So, so that's the problem with this stuff. Um, yeah, let's continue on the big cap because I feel like, you know, they're they're definitely, so Microsoft, right? Microsoft, look at this: four weeks up, new high, two weeks sideways. Like this one is not at the top of the range, but still, it's uh, it's still sideways range. It's pretty tight, like. Like yeah, super tight. The volume has dried up. Um, the only thing I'm not sure is like, like Microsoft is gonna gain lots of pe customers from like using their open AI stuff. Um, mm -hmm. so meaning that will be a lot of new revenue like coming in the next year. But the question is still about like the cost of operating this AI, right? How like how much it's gonna cost them. I don't know. I don't know how they. Like, I don't know how that affect the the balance sheet as well, because they invest lots of money in that company, but is those money like not relevant? Meaning like it just put it as investments, and then the cost of actually running those AI stuff, like where does that come in? Like, I don't know. Like I that's something that that I, I I probably will listen to the conference call. I want to I want to understand that better. How they're gonna get make money, right? So every time I'm I'm using AI right now, I'm using the, the you know the Bing AI. It doesn't cost me a dime, right? As a as an individual to use it, yeah. but it costs them money to run it, right? So, and they say on average, I don't know if this is true. They say on average like it costs like like Google, uh, I think half a cent or something for running a search query, right? Something like that. I don't remember the number. Like half a cent to run a query, uh, on Google. We you know. Whereas right now using open AI, it costs about, it can cost as much as five times. Like it could be up to like one cent or two cent even, um, for Microsoft to run every query. And, and right now they're not making money from this, right? So I don't know, uh, how, like the key is that how they can monetize it. Uh, is that, is that cost going to be like, you know, so that, that's, that could be the only bad news I can see for Microsoft is that, um, they may they may announce like you know a huge expense that just came up so for for operating this I don't know but overall the future looks bright for Microsoft um, um I always say this it could be the next ten trillion dollar company I don't know if this thing works out for them mm -hmm. yeah um yeah Apple will see like it's been very quiet lately but it's still it's doing really nice look look at this uptrend. I think all the big cap tags are holding up nicely. And volume has really dry off. Look at that. Holy cow. So dry. Um yeah, but they're really quiet, so I don't know if they're what they're doing. <laughs> uh Amazon just announced that they're, they're gonna have an AI too as well. Um mm -hmm. like you know, I don't know what these capabilities are, but it, it it jumped on that news, right? You see that. Um so so this thing is coming back now. And everyone say Amazon is probably the the um, the cheapest out of the, all the big cap tech, so, so it could have a more room to run. So this is coming to two hundred day again, so we have to see mm -hmm. if it can. Oh. But if it does, then uh, yeah, this one they say is the, uh, the you know the best value for your money if if it does work out, you know if it, yeah anyhow. Um, uh, what else do we not look at yet? Netflix. I don't know. I don't I don't really follow Netflix as much. But it's building a nice cup with handle pattern. Volume did come in on Friday, I don't know why. 
Oh, I mean on this week. Yeah, I don't know if there was some news. Oh, they reported. Um. Oh yeah, that's right. They reported. Okay, they missed earnings. Okay, they missed a little bit. Yeah. Um. Uh. Any. Yeah, Google. Google. Like I say, I'm. I'm worried for Google a little bit, because. Yeah. You have to think, right? If everyone is using Chat GPT, like no, like you don't even have to go to search engine no more. And this is the problem. You don't have to go to search engine. You just type in the 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 you know the the the, the AI tool, and you just type your question and give you the answer. Like you don't even click on like you can click on the links. I think they still give you the links at the bottom, but it gives you an answer first. So, so the problem is like you don't even see any ads no more. Like so, I don't know if people are starting using the open AI too and and no one's using Google search, they're gonna lose a lot of advertisement revenue, right? Uh and then the and then the stock also fell because Samsung said again, I don't know if this is a rumor or just uh, uh announcement yet. The the Samsung's gonna switch right from some Google search to to Bing search yes. by default. So that's yeah, huge. Yes. Yeah, so that's that's a big hit for Google. I think they estimate three billion or something. I think that's a per quarter or per year, I don't know. Um but that's a huge revenue hit for them, I think. Um so but but nonetheless the stock is still surprisingly acting really well, right? Look at this. Like it even bounced back, found support, and then look at Thursday and Friday. It still it just didn't give up this short term twenty one day line. Um uh, so yeah. But we'll see what they announce. Maybe they'll announce even more news. I think Friday they said they were gonna merge two AI units, which is kind of funny because why did they have two AI units and stuff? <laughs> uh, yeah. So, but the, it, you can see this broken the two hundred day. Now it's basically, you know, uh, considered on an uptrend now. You know, so we'll see. Yeah. Uh, let me see. What, what, do you have any stocks you want to look at? Uh, yeah, I have a few. Uh, okay. 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 Yeah. So, um, Palo Alto. I really like this stock. Um, I can't remember. Jim Ropel said something about it this week. I can't remember what it is. It's something about like how they um, are really superior in terms of where they're at today. I can't remember the exact thing though. But anyhow, he likes it. And this stock is, you know, it's really holding tight here on the weekly chart. You can see like really nice trending. Again, this is one of those stocks I haven't touched since I bought it. Like, you know, I didn't even have to trade in and out. It's just really nice, easy to hold. Um yeah it's moving up the right side of the base and you know most still are 39 days from earnings so you still have a long way to go um mm -hmm. yeah it's looking really good so it did pull back like, but this stock does pull back sometimes like right here it's not it's no big deal those are no it's holding the 21 day line you can see uh right now this one's slightly below it but the 50 day is coming up so oh, that's good, right? So we'll probably find support at the fifty day. Um again, that's the the if there's one thing I learned from IBD is this the fifty day is where big institutions always support the best stock. So uh if you fall below fifty day, that's when you really want to uh maybe think about, you know, getting out, right? But usually you don't want to think about getting out until it breaks that line. Because short term ten twenty one that's nothing, you know. So we we're in for the long ride. So if this thing can go a long long time, like let it ride. Okay, so that's PNW. Four, I think uh some analysts short came up with a short report and then they got tanked, right? Yeah. So um uh, unfortunately it got hit pretty hard. The highest volume ever. Like I don't think there was even one volume that is that high. So that is concerned. So I got tripped. You can see I'm an arrow right here. Um, <laughs> so luckily I got out at a pretty good price. <laughs> um, but it was a it was a bad day. You know, like it went down so far, right? And then it bounced back. Um, the next two days. So that gives you another chance to get out. I I 
I wouldn't get back in until like we, I see. Uh, so this is the downtrend line right now, like unless it come back above that uptrend, the downtrend line. I wouldn't even, you know, I I don't know. It's it's one of those right. Once you have a heavy volume selling, and this is pretty big. This is big. Like I I, I don't know. Like if you go back to SMCI when that short report comes out, let me see that volume. Yeah, it wasn't that big, right? Like I think that was. Uh, three weeks ago yeah it wasn't that big so this one is i don't know people tend to seem to somehow maybe you know but again it's hard to say because this has it's having a nice uptrend it broke this um uh, now it's gonna build definitely gonna build a base here so i will be more patient with this guy yeah so i i just i just shot out on this one so that's one of the stuff i got shot out um so for Four, yeah, four. Okay, let's talk about some good stocks. Um, H I S R G reported this week. Intuitive Surgical Health stock broke out really nice. Look how tight it is after it broke out. So again, this is what I'm talking about, right? You have this one big day, like, and then it just trade tightly after, like, you know, this pattern. This is this is exactly what you want to see. Um, using the wrong tool. That's why I can't draw it fast. Yeah, so this, this, like this, like this, right? Really tight. So, yeah, I'll probably get into this stock. Um, if, um, yeah, because it just reported. I just want to see if it can hold that high. I'd rather pay higher sometimes. I don't like to rush in on the first day, um, on the breakout, unless, because this was a big gap, you know? Um, so if it's already up so much that day, I'm like, nah, I'll just wait. So, uh, but I, I do like this stock. This stock is like, if you look at monthly chart, it's one of the, lo like the best stock in history, man. Look at this. It's just crazy, man. Yeah. But you don't hear this so much on TV, right? It's one of the mm -hmm. best stock. Like you, you can even go back further than this. It's just, this is a stock that makes, um, like kind of almost like robotic stuff like surgical stuff um that is based on robotics mm -hmm. right so it's almost like a uh, i don't know if they use ai but i'm just saying right it's almost like a, a smart robot that do surgery and stuff and, yeah and so um so now you can see this nice long base from the last year and now it's starting to break mm -hmm. out you know this is starting to break out so on the monthly chart this is a monthly chart so you know you can see in history right it, it, like it, it does you know pull back pretty hard but after that it, it kind of it just move up nice this is again this is one of those stocks that um you know how do you say um has lots of potential you know and some people even say oh can they still lead them you know i i don't know it probably can they have done it so many times and yeah a little bit volatile sometimes I guess here when it's doing down to, but normally it's fine. Look at this. This is nice uptrend right here. Uh, this one little bit choppy. Lots of choppiness here. Yeah, we'll see. But I like the numbers. Um, they're projecting. So this is just like starting to positive again, but the numbers are pretty good. I think. Um, ISRG. Let's see. I think it's a volume. 44%. Yeah, that's not bad. And this guy is like, you see, it's growing, right? 100 billion cap now. It's starting to grow. $300. Nice round number. Okay, next stop LBS. So, again, this is like kind of travel related. They're saying um, the big story here is China. How, you know, since Macau opened because of pandemic, they, because remember, we, we, like, it seems like so long ago, it's only since January that they opened it up, China, you know? And so, if you follow, like, for me, I think, like, the same way, right? Like, if, if, like, just like here, like, in North America, we opened up, like, when? Um, yeah, almost like, almost like a long time ago, like, since September, I can't remember. Or even earlier. Like, March, yeah, March last year, I think. It's been a year already, I think, we opened up. And so, like, if they're just open for six months and this is what it does, I think it has a long way to go. Like people are gonna travel like crazy in China. 
and they all want to go, you know, gamble in <laughs> casinos. Uh, so I, I really like this dog. It's a it's a it's a turnaround story. Um, they're going from negative to positive, right? Um, and you know they're making money, and right now see they're projecting two hundred percent from a negative number, so that will give it roughly uh, um, um, so hundred percent would be zero. Yeah, so it'll be like thirty four cents or something, or more, slightly more. So yeah, so they, they they're making money now and they're back to business. So yeah. So this let's see where the high is. Yeah, so this stock you can see the high is a long time ago. That was back in uh two thousand eighteen. Okay. So we might have long ways to go. Uh that's that's the that's the newcomers on my list. Alright. So Elf, everyone talking about Elf, because he has such a fantastic week. Look at this run. Um, if I draw the upper channel line, so some people say it has broken the upper channel line. It's almost time to sell. Um, you can see here. Um, yeah, it's really nice. You can see this upper channel. Yeah, so you can see it broken. Um, so, you know, definitely a good time to start taking some profit. Um, no one knows how far this will go. You know, that's, 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 this is starting to look like a climax run. A climax run is when you just go up like crazy, like at, a, at an angle that is like pretty hard to attain for, for a long period of time. But, yeah, so, uh, yeah, this is a big story this week. Um, it's obviously extended to get into it right now. We'll have to wait for it to pull back if you want to add to this. Um, that's Elf. Mm -hmm. And then the volume came in even at this high level. But sometimes at the top, is the, the volume is less dependable because people are actually also selling. So we got to be careful about that. Okay. So this is one good stock on my portfolio right now. Um... I did take a little bit of profit on Friday because uh, I don't know when it's going to start to fall. So um, it could continue for another few weeks. We never know. Um, so we'll see. And this one is due, EPS due 33 days from now. So that's still far away. So let's hold it for a little bit more. Let's see what happens. Uh, Lentius broke out to new high this week. Or last week it did. And it just continued this week. Um... Yeah, this is superb stock. Um, you know, this is clearly in the stage two uptrend now. Um, lots of volume. Yeah, say so six weeks of blue now. That's crazy. Um, yeah, it's still going. Broke the new high. That's that's a good sign. So, oh, like some of the health stocks are doing incredible. Like this is one of them. Right, look at daily. It's just riding this 10 day line like crazy. Look at that. It's just riding it. Okay, the next one is Shockwave. So, this one, I, I didn't even know that um, yesterday. <laughs> he said it shot up like 10% at the open. I was like, what happened? And uh, I thought it was just bouncing off this 10 day. And then I found that Boston Scientific might acquire them. So, you know, you see the highest volume come in. So, everyone, you know, Buying on that rumor right now. Um, mm -hmm. Wow! Look at the volume. Yeah. So surprisingly, this one is uh, my best performer right now. Uh, because I, I think I bought roughly, I think somewhere around here. I think yeah, this day. I mean, somewhere around there. So this is my best performer right now, and yeah. So two weeks, like last week, it already started to climb. And this week, it just went up on this news on Friday. And, you know, obviously strong fundamentals. So. What is the news again? Uh, Boston Scientific wants to buy it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So this is another medical stock. It's funny. It went the opposite. This guy went the opposite. Yeah, see? He went the opposite. <laughs> Usually, it does happen. Like, you know, he went the opposite. 
So, but I don't know. This it's just a rumor. It's not confirmed. Uh, but the one thing, usually, you know, again, I don't I don't know for sure because I don't usually trade this on that. But usually they say like for health stocks, usually they give a high premium, right? So, so when there's a being acquired, they usually give a, quite a big premium. So the, probably people get in because you know, thinking that hey, it's up ten percent, but maybe the premium is like thirty or forty percent, right? So you know, again, this is just assuming the rumor is real. So, <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, short wave has been like again same thing, like six weeks of blue. Uh, health stocks really, really uh, taking over, you know. Um, yeah. So that's that one. Um, let me go back to my notepad here. Oh, okay, this one. I always cry when I look at this stock because uh, I don't know why I never got in. I was in it before and then I got out and then I got shaken out and then I never got back in. So this is also. Five weeks blue. This is the one that sells Ozempic. You, you know Ozempic, right? The fat oh, yeah. diet, the fat drug, the fat loss drug, whatever they call it. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. A lot of celebrities using it. It's like it's all like everyone's using it. Like everyone's showing on TikTok and stuff, losing weight using using their drug. Um. And I knew about it before, like I said, that's why I had it, you know, around this time. I had, I had, yeah. I was in and out during that time, and then I got shaken out, like, just by a little bit. Yeah, right here, this one. And then I never bought it back, and that was the time it took off. So, I'm still pissing myself. Um, and I, I, I even had a alert on it, but I don't know what happened. I just didn't end up following up on it. Okay, so that, that was when it took off. And now it's up almost twenty percent. And this is a giant cap, right? Four hundred billion. So, anyhow. Yep. So that was that one. It's really good fundamentals. I think uh, you have to understand the obesity market is so big that if if this continue, like if this is truly works, and they're the leader in this, right? So meaning like they're the one. Who um who are the furthest ahead in terms of time because people are already testing it using it and so like people that's why I say people are showing on it's been six months they're showing on TikTok here just how much weight I lost blah 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 right so that is that time essence is on their side because as people are using it they're able to show their you know weight loss and then on TikTok or whatever and then people like now oh I'm gonna try it now I'm gonna go to my doctor and get it now you know. So, so that's why they, they, this could grow even bigger than anyone can imagine because obesity market is huge in North America. Um, mm-hmm. So, and and like and their earnings right now, let me see, it's pretty high, or like it's projected pretty high. So, um, so that's good. It's, they're actually making money. I think it's like uh, I don't know, forty, thirty, or forty percent. Um, Let me go to my special. I'm gonna take longer to find it there. Thirty-five percent. I think they'll beat that number. This was even like projected two months ago, before all this hype about Ozempic. So, and that's exactly yeah. So I think they'll beat it easily. They're selling like, like cupcakes, man. Um. So I I just because it's extended, I can't get in right. Like I I don't want to get trapped. This was the Friday I could have bought in, like, but I don't like buying on the Friday. I don't like, like, that's one of my rules. I hate buying at the end of the week. Usually I want to sell at the end of the week. <laughs> uh, you know, so we'll see. Yeah, but this was a nice uh, pullback. I don't remember what the news was on Wednesday where it dropped. That was, that was a big drop. I can't remember the news on that day. I think they got a downgrade. Yeah, maybe that was it. They got a downgrade. And then look at Friday, jump up like crazy. Oh, man. All right, so that's that one. Um, Hubs. So this guy, like, you know, we talked about this many times, but it keeps coming back on my radar. 
it's one of, like it's a stock that you know obviously not new and uh it's starting to climb on the right side it's called software enterprise and the one thing i really like this stock is how tight it's trading right now and it's you know 20 billion cap it's liquid um it's a turnaround story right and you know institutions are still buying it 1.2 up down ratio 99 composite rate yeah everything technically looks perfect and yeah i i really like this stock it's the earning, earnings due in 11 days so i i'm not going to get into it usually because i haven't owned it for a while so i'm just going to wait for the earnings and see if earnings good then then i'll consider getting in but it's just how tight this is this is like a very bullish uh pattern it's like super like yeah this is super bullish it's like a pendant that is like slanted upward so if it breaks out look at how tight the last like i don't know 10 almost 10 trading sessions right there at the end here so tight look at this wow it's just amazing wow. this is institution like look look at this selling right here like even draw this line look at this it's like slanted like look at this slant look at this look, this one day right here thursday it's like yeah I agree. when you see that i've seen many examples of this whenever you see like a a, a stock and I'm not talking about like you know, little small caps here, right? This is 20 billion cap. Like when you see that in like a, a, a slightly bigger cap stock, this is a good sign, like super good sign. Like, you know, yeah. So so this is on my radar right now. Um, but like I said, it's too close to earnings. I don't really want to get in, even if it breaks out here. Um, yeah. Plus this earning season, I say, is still early. Um, yeah. So usually this next two weeks is the big one. Um, because we have, yeah, we have the last week of April, and then we have the first week of, of May. And then the third week of May is usually where most younger growth stocks start to uh, broadcast. Um, their their earnings, you know. So the younger ones, smaller ones. So that is also a big week for growth stocks. So, so we have three big important weeks ahead, right? We have large caps, and more medium caps, and then finally we have the small caps. Like every week is different, every day is different caps. But I'm just saying, in general, I find that's when usually I see the most small caps, medium caps, and large caps, at least on the growth side. Okay, so that's where we at. Um, yeah, that's it for my stock ideas right now. Um. We go do you have anything else uh can you look at hymns h-i-m-s oh yeah hymns let me see oh hymns right here hymns at number 10. i haven't followed this stock so let's take a look wow look at this it, 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 it's building this nice cup base this is second base yeah it's starting to come back volume is nice this week yeah yeah, this is looking very good. Yeah. Volume is there. Look at all these volumes. All the blue volume is there. Yeah. I haven't um heard too much about it. Let me let me go see if I have um my stock story. I don't even think I have it. We'll see. I, I always forget. Do you know what they do? I can, I don't remember. Yeah, it's kind of more of millennium brand like uh, okay basically health and beauty products oh yeah 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 okay uh, health and but health. not only for girls basically so oh for both oh that's i see i see yeah i haven't heard too much people talk about it that's in, that's why it never come back on my radar but um yeah it's still a young company it's good it looks really good like this is on a sec this is you know prior uptrend first stage broke out now we're on the second stage right here so this is the trend line so this is stage two uptrend really good um small cap yeah is there any story on this um yeah 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 i don't think ibd has done the story on it yet hmm. all right some Be weekly volumes look so symmetric right even sell side and buy side also if you see yeah yeah that's true yeah always following the trend 
Yeah. I'm Muslim a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to do you Muslim daily. Okay, daily you can see a little bit better. Um, so volume has been rising here as the stock price go up. And then as it goes down, volume has been going down. Um, yeah, and then lately, like I said, there's lots of volumes buying. So that's a good sign. Really good. Yeah, I gotta maybe pay attention. To it. Like I said, I don't know the story behind this stock. So that's the reason probably why I'm not watching it. But it, it looks pretty good, technically. 89 composite. That's because it doesn't have like probably the I like, see this is why this the past own negatives, but I'm pretty sure yeah um let me check hymns let me check what is forecast okay so okay so yeah the the earnings not that good it's only fifteen percent improvement from a negative number so that's yeah that's probably why I don't have it mind you. But the chart looks good. It's telling a different story. So, uh, up and down is 1.4. Oh, yeah, look at this. Fun Institution is buying it. Look at this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why IBD hasn't talked about it. But, like I say, it could be because of the forecast earnings. But I don't know. Like, um, I think they have talked about it a couple of times, but not actually. On the IB Live, but not from an article standpoint. Usually, when they do interviews and stuff, that's when they write those articles, and then that's where you get like some more on information about company, like what their plans are, who are their target audience, all that, all those details, right? Um, but yeah, this is like they said, technically, it looks really good. It's a young cap, young company, yeah. So that's this guy. Um, all this is like biotech stock. Um, yeah, Miniso. I think I got sh I got Miniso. Yeah, Miniso didn't work out. I think I got short out again. Stop out. It's uh, it's falling. You know, it's making new lows. You can see here. On Friday, mm -hmm. it, it bounced back up, but I got, I got trimmed. Oh, this stock is hard, hard. It's, it's, you know, at the end of the day, that's the thing, right? You, you're going to try a few times and then, I don't know. It's, it's right now, it's just building this sideway, little bit base band. Um, TCMD, the, I can't remember if I added it this way. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at this chart. Wow. So, right? Look at this chart. So this is probably a small cap. Yeah, this is small cap. Uh, medical products. I again, this a lot of small caps. I just don't know their story. So, but the chart looks good. This is kind of like hymns. Not bad. Uh, institution has gone down there, so that's not good. But the chart is telling a different story. Interesting. Um, yeah, really small. Okay, we already talked about L. Inta, the Inta, I would, I would really like, um, uh, I would really pay attention to this guy. Like, I added more this week. It just, I don't know, like it might fall hard, like at, at some point, like because every stock eventually will fall back down and build a base. But but you manage it through risk, right? So, but anyhow, um, it's just so tight, like trading. Like, I never seen the stock trade so tight for uh, mm -hmm. a, a a small cap. Like it just shows that usually that happens when the supply and demand there's way more demand than supply, and so every time someone wants to sell, it just buy it, right? It's like you know someone put an order in to sell, and then someone will put an order in to buy, it, like so that the price doesn't drop much, right? So it almost seems like there's some sort of accumulation happening behind the scene. You can see, it went, like it's pretty clear here. You see all, all these highs here that touches that red line and just drew. All of them are blue. Mm -hmm. So you, you know it's hard to tell the difference day to day, but you know, but over a long period of time, you can see 
there is definitely lots of accumulation happening. And the tightness is what like really uh, intrigued me the most here. It's for a small cap to be that tight. It's it's real rare. It's very rare. So, um, yeah, like I say. Um, so Intel, search for this. So, um, professional financial service. They're they're competing with giants like Salesforce and SAP. That's pretty big, and. They are investing in artificial intelligence to help customers be more productive. Uh, they deal with compliance regulation, billing, and even suggestions for deal making. So, so they're a financial service firm, um, which is, I think, let me come back. I think, is it, is it here? Um, no, it doesn't talk. I thought they're like pretty much. Yeah, so they're competing with SAP and uh, Salesforce. So that's a big market, right? That they're a small guy going after the big guys, basically. So, yeah. And we all know, like, you know, CIM is doing pretty well. Mm -hmm. Like, look at this. It's doing pretty well. You know. Uh, is it? Let me see what the earnings are. Yeah, this is at the top. I don't know. Every time I always think, is this correct? Because this is 98 cents. It's choosing to jump fivefold. That's a lot. I don't know if that's correct. I always question this. See? 500%. Because if it's truly 500%, that's a lot. Because look at these numbers here. Right? Yeah. I don't know. I always question that number. I don't know. Um... Yes. Yeah. One point three ninety eight. Um. It it dropped earlier, institution, but it's now coming back. But yeah, this is big cap for sure. So this is really good too. So yeah, so those those two are kind of related. I don't know. I don't. I never look at SAP because it's like Europe, right? Um. But look at this new highs. Wow. Look at that. So those three stocks are like something is happening. <laughs> uh, so yeah, those are pretty good, pretty good stocks. We already talked about Nvidia. It says this stock always come up, but I'm pretty sure the earnings not as strong. Um, TGLS. So that's another stock. Um, so this is in the building. So they're making new high this week. That's really nice. So that looks pretty good. So still holding it. So it might, like the the building stop. If you look at this, like look at this run here. It's really strong. Um, really young company. Um, yeah, ninety nine. At this moment, I honestly don't think I will look at any stock that is less than ninety nine. There's there's so many now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's why. Um, like every metric has to be good basically is what i'm trying to say um because there's so many of them now like why focus on the ones that are slightly uh you know have less of a metric so uh see fastly is one of the older names but it's, it's doing well too that one is also in software right so um let's see. yes okay it's not it doesn't look as strong as like Salesforce or Intel, but but again, it's, it's one of the mm -hmm. few that do okay. Uh, BBAI, I haven't looked at this in a while either. Th these guys, they don't they don't really have earnings much. That's the only problem. Like, um, so I'm hesitant to buy this stock. They're literally volatile. It's it's all because of the AI team. That's team, right? That's why I have it in this list. But it's not really. Uh, yeah, profitable. Unless unless they may be this quad uh, this reported corner. I don't know. Uh this one oil and gas here. Win, that's the same as L V S. I A S. Okay, let's take a quick view. This is also oh look at this. Special enterprise. Computer software enterprise. Look at this run. This is similar to Intel. Yeah. 
similar. Almost the same size too. Uh, cloud platform for digital advertising. Okay. Yeah, I don't I don't know this stuff well. Um but it's reporting earnings soon, so so that's something to pay attention to. It's doing pretty good though. It's like many many weeks up. Uh volume has dried up on this pullback, which is good. Um yeah, so we'll see if this bounce hold. Yeah. But yeah, too close to the earnings report. I, I I wouldn't want to buy this right now. Onan. Okay, this one did well, I think, this week. Everyone talking about Onan? This is a phenomenon, I think. <laughs> Funny how it rhymes. Uh, but yeah, it, 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 it break out really strong, right? Really strong. Went sideways, and then everyone thought it's gonna break out. It it tried to break out, and then it fell. So a lot of people got trapped here. You know, the panic sell, and then now mm -hmm. it bounced off, and now we have this trend line going upward. And look at this, it closed ten cents, slightly ten cents above the previous high. So, is this another trap? I don't know. Um, but this stock is looking good. That's all I'm saying. Everywhere I hear, like I hear people talking about, like like even the IBD guys, like I gotta go try on own on shoes, and they love it. It's like there's yeah. so many choices. I don't, I never seen them here in Canada yet. I don't know if it's in the yeah, store. I have seen a lot actually. Oh, you have seen it? Okay. No, I I haven't really paid attention because I haven't been looking for shoes. <laughs> but but I want to try them and see if they're good. Yeah. Yeah. I should I should go. Um. Yeah, this is a Switzerland-based company. 9,200 stores as of late. Um, yeah, there's lots. Like I said, this, this stock is starting to, to, to be, uh, a lot of people are starting to look at it. And we'll see if this thing can, you know, can go. It's, it's holding really strong right now. Like, like I said, even break to new high this week. So this is like really, really good action. Um, yeah. I, I think I add to it this week. I'm pretty sure I did. I, I don't remember which day though. I don't know if it's Tuesday or Thursday. I can't remember. One of those days. Because I, I remember like it's just touching the 10 day. And then I was like, okay, it's time to get in. Because it already has a nice bounce here. So mm -hmm. when it's near 10 day, that's usually when I, I want to get in. Um, If there's a bounce. So yeah, this is really strong. Like technically. um, And yeah, it's, it's performing really well. In, in the top is 22nd on my list here yeah uh construction mining oii this is gas and edu okay this name i i always trade this name before i'm surprised now it's come back up let's see this is china china education stuff okay i see what's going on so here you go um traditional buy points right here so yeah this is looking good now again this is the trend line right now so yeah lots of, look look at this two days of volume that's really strong compared to look at this it went as far back as this that's a long time back so this is a good sign so i think all the digestion is done uh i like trading this stock you can see i trade this stock many times and yeah i make money on this stock trading short term so I should focus on this again. Like this is, I haven't done much short term trading lately. Um, but this is one stock I like to trade short term because it, it always seems to work. It it does a few days of run, get your five ten percent, and you're good with it. Um, and it happens a lot too. That's the thing. So, LSCC we talk about uh, another oil and gas Exxon. The like this this one comes out all the time, but again they have. Really low forecast earnings, that's why I don't look at it. Rambus, another oil and gas. Whips, this is China's. It's interesting, Chinese stock is starting to pop up, up here. Let me take a look again. Um, okay, see, now it, it's, it's, it's coming back slowly. You can see it fell and then come back. So, this is a weekly chart. This is the. This is, yeah, there's a few, right? Like, this Whips is, uh, what we call 
Chinese online discount retailer for apparel at discount prices. So I don't know what to compare that to. Um, but yeah. So this is look at this base how tight it is. Oh my god, it's a nineteen percent correction. It's a uh, twelve weeks right now. Like that's a tight base. Wow. And and look at this run last time. Like just you know look at this run right here. How many weeks is that? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten weeks run. So right here, look at this one right here. Ten weeks run. Wow. <laughs> And look at how tight it went sideways for that for many weeks now. So if it break out of this trend like trend line right here at the top, this is definitely you know another one um, to pay attention. This one. Wait, wait. Okay, let's look at the fundamentals. Yeah, I think this is a turnaround story. Um, sales are still weak because of the pandemic, right? So I don't know if it's because of pandemic, but I'm just saying I don't know. Um, numbers of institutions okay, it's rising a little bit again. Okay, so this is not good. I don't like up and down ratio under one. And compensation rating is eighty eight. So those are the couple of things that I don't like. So yeah, maybe for trading purposes okay. I don't know about holding it. Okay, so we'll skip that. Uh, we'll skip XM. I think this is being acquired. Aon. Okay, Aon. I added to it. This week, um, look at this uptrend. I love this uptrend. It's like it's a really nice uptrend. It's like really nice. It's like a steady uptrend. It's not a fast one, but it's a steady um, mm -hmm. turnaround story. This is um, <laughs> it's always because David Ryan always talked about us. He was saying how uh, uh, yeah, you know, the most boring stock like selling air conditions and heating products, you know, <laughs> furnaces, you know. <laughs> But, but you, you wouldn't think of buying a stock like that. But but these are the kind of stocks that are nice and steady. Um, yeah, looks good. Okay. Uh, 1.6, 99. Look at, look at this. This is consistent, right? Institutions getting in. And that's why the price keep going higher. Um, this was the big base right here. This is the, you know, one base, long base, and then another base. And then look at this mess right here. And then once it broke out, look at it. It trade very orderly now. At least on the weekly chart. <laughs> um, yeah, even on the daily chart, it looks pretty nice. So, so at first I was trading in and out, and then um, I think now I, I'm gonna hold it longer term. So this is a nice uptrend. Right here. So nearly hundred bucks, almost like SMCI, hundred bucks. So. So when stocks go 100, I, I really like it. I don't know why. It's just like a, a nice round number. It's like it will attract more institutions that way, probably. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's one I add. I didn't add to many. I think I only add to a few, like Aon, on on. Um, Wiz is another one that, but this is oil and gas. Um, ERJ. This is uh, aerospace defense. Let's see. I believe it's a younger stock. Yeah, look at this trend. It's really nice. Uh, it's doing pull back right now. Um, but the volume is. Look at this volume. It's like not there, right? No one's selling. Um, yeah, it's really nice uptrend. This is aerospace and defense, young company. Um, yeah, it's a turnaround story. Yeah, I don't know about the institution. Not much institution to jump in. So that's that's probably my only red flag here. This one, Burr Finance in the. I'm pretty sure these are all young companies, because uh, I never heard of them. Okay, so here two billion cap. Look at this run. Wow. So this is a turnaround story. Wow. Look at up down volume. Okay, composite rating is not good, probably because of uh, of all these negatives, and sales also not good. So fundamental is not good. Technical it broken out long term. Look at this long term trend it broke out. So uh, something is happening to this company. I don't know the story. Yeah. 
can see anything that okay, I'm gonna jump to uh let's see PDFS that we actually talk about Pi Hmm okay let's look at Pi Still trading tight almost feels like you see back to back close near the top those are always good sign almost feels like you want to break out hmm interesting okay found support here that's really good wow that's a clear support right there that's a clear support sign that's really good yeah I need to set 140 this is too I need to set a buy point there just in case it break out because I feel like this stock is looking so one of the things that um I don't know which chapter he talks about. It's it's again it's it's related to like the the volatility contraction pattern. So as the volatility kind of dies down, um and the volume comes on tie down, you should you should you will see a big one. And so hmm this volume is really high. I don't like that one. See that one? It's sticking out like a sore thumb. You see that? I don't like that. So that's the only problem with this pattern. So, yeah, okay. So, so I never got into Pi for many reasons, but um, it just never moved fast enough for me. It's a really slow move. Let's look at some solar stocks because I think there was some movement this week. Um, yeah. See, first solar is near new high again. That's crazy, man. This stock is just never ending. It just keep going. It's like a, a energizer bunny, you know? <laughs> Look at this. It's just an energizer bunny. It just keep going. Um, yeah, it's, it's looking good. Let's jump to end phase. I think it's starting to build the right side of the base. Yeah, see? So this is also a good sign. Um, right now, the up and down volume ratio is still under 0.8. So, you know... Um, that's the only problem that I find, but uh, but right now you can see this uptrend is pretty nice. Hopefully it's not a fake move, but it is starting to come back out. It's like you know, yeah. Let me say a big point. I just don't want to miss this guy if it does continue higher. Because uh, sometimes you know I like the you know lower entry buy points because you have the least risk, right? And then. Uh, and then you have huge potential. If it does climb, it has huge potential. And, you know, you can set your risk level somewhere around here, 50 day or something. It's near the 50 day. If you go down below, back below 50 day, usually that's a sign that, you know, it's not going to work. Because if it breaks out of 50 day, it should, it should continue and write this 10 day line like that. So, but yeah, I would watch this because like, you know, this is a good example, right? These are previous leaders, and they just took a break. Doesn't mean they fall they fall apart. Like if you go, sorry, if I go back to weekly chart, right? So this these are like leaders last year when things are going, you know. And then I remember this. It, it tried to break up, but it just never went far, and then it broke down for many weeks. And then now we're finally turning up again. So why? So what I'm trying to say, if you look at length, here, same thing, right? These are previous leaders, right? And then they broke down hard. And then once they start the right side of the base, like buying at the low point here, above 50 day, above all so the short term moving average. And if you see, like, you know, even volume accumulation, that's even better. Look at this volume right here, right? So those are the kind of things you want to see that, hey, this is probably for real. And then the other long term thing to look at is this 200 day line. Look at this. It, as it corrects, the 200 day is actually flattening, but that's a concern. But like I say, once we see that volume, it, it kind of con confirmed that, hey, the uptrend will resume. So, same thing with shortwave, same thing. But let's come back to end phase. So, we, we, like, this thing never really took off, right? As much as we hoped it would, but it's just, it's okay. Like, we had this one big week here, two, second week, and then it just never, mm -hmm. never went anywhere. I still remember this last year. So we'll see if this is, um, you know, another try for it. I think it could go. Again, this guy has support numbers. It's just, oh, deal in three days. So that's the thing. I can't usually buy within, you know, so close to the earnings report. I need to leave it some room.
but because I just bought it, I have no room. So if this thing 10, 10, 15 percent that day, I, I don't, I don't want to make that risk, right? So I rather, you know, kind of like I intuitive surgical. I rather let it. If it does go up this way, 10 percent up or 15 percent up, then I wait for that pullback, and then if it goes again, then that's when I buy. So that's that's kind of.